Hey guys, you may have been expecting Sasuke the Savage to be here, but uh, unfortunately he got himself incarcerated after his last video. But I'll let him tell his own story, so I'm going to go and call him up right now. Sasuke, uh, I have you recorded. Uh, you can go ahead and tell your uh, story to the people. Go ahead. Take your time, man. It's a, it's a long story, but, yo, know, for the people, from Sasuke the Savage, the Blow Rider, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm locked the fuck up, dawg. If you want to know how, watch the 2020 Best Boy Wars. I did the intro for that, and Disney, the company that runs First Tate, said, I stole their format, and it's against the law. Like, what the fuck kind of shit is that? But, um, anyways, I'm still the host. I'm still doing my thing, but I ain't got to do all that yelling and shit. You getting the real me off the block, motherfucker. Hey, yo, guard, guard, guard. They may have to sell 15 minutes, dog. 15 minutes. You can watch over me, whatever. The acoustics all fucked up over here. All right, all hey, right. Hey, hey, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I knew you was real. I knew you was real. <laughs> hey, let's go, let's go. Oh, yeah. I like this. Let's do this. <clears throat> all right, we live. I'm good. I know y'all doing good because y'all ain't behind bars like me. I'm Satsuki the Savage, and I present to you the second edition of Best Girl Wars. However, before getting into the action, it is my duty to inform the public of an urgent development. Typically, Best Girl Wars only consists of extraordinary characters coming from anime. This year, though, a manga character who has proven to be special will be included in the war. The one guideline that must be adhered to, though, is only one girl would be selected as a representative of the anime they hailed from. Again, only one girl from one anime. Now, without further delay, let's introduce each character by their seating from lowest to highest. Keep in mind though, the seating was based on the number of favorites these characters had on my anime list. Now, let's see our participants. At number eight, a peculiar challenger coming from an idol anime, but is not an idol herself. I give you Yu Takasaki from Love Live Nijikasaki. Pinned at number seven, climbing up the ranks and determined to make these girls watch your tale, we have a Nox Zahard residing in the anime Tower of God. At number six, currently painting a self-portrait prophesizing her own victory, I give you Arte from Arte. Dwelling at number five, standing at a staggering height of 6'10", weighing in at 273 pounds, she could have played center for the Miami Heat. She could have played tight end for the Buccaneers. I present to you Noi from Doro, he Doro. Ushering in our special contender at number four, here for her marvelous performance in One Punch Man, and it doesn't take a sidekick to know who I'm referring to, we have the Tornado of Terror, Tatsumaki. At three, known for her to die for tea and thirst of knowledge and love by thirsty niggas, we have Echidona from ReZero. Sitting at number two, ready to ya yeah, hello her ass to the finish line, we have Yue Yuigahama representing my romantic teen comedy snafu. And our number one, the condescending high IQ Sunade, our first seed from last year, I still read from anger at her loss to Toru in the finals, I give you Kaguya Shinomiya from Kaguya-sama. Just like that, with the formalities out of the way, we can step into the fire and get this tournament on the roll. Let us begin. Round one. So for the first fight, we got Kaguya versus you. 
In terms of caring over the qualities that I knew and loved from season one, Kaguya did impress. With a combination of cuteness, intelligence, and comedy, Kaguya is a legit triple threat with little to no weaknesses as a character. You might stand to remain the cutest in this tournament, even beating out Kaguya. Her eyes light up and her passion shines when idols are the topic. She even has the gleam of her eyes shaped in a heart on occasions. I just love how fanatic you can be. Unfortunately, cuteness is not something I put heavy stock in. So even though Kaguya was beaten in that category, she wins it overall in other facets. Let me say this right out the gate. Fuck a Yukino. I might not be totally on a Yui train, but I damn sure prefer it over Yukino, alright? With that being said, I think Yui really won over the fans' hearts this season, especially after seeing her circumstance. The odds were heavily stacked against her, and she tried her damnedest, and our sympathy goes with Yui. Anak is in a different realm. She is on here simply because the lizard girl is raw. The crown game is my favorite arc in the Tower of God, and she is the reason why. The image of Anak sitting on a throne not giving a fuck is still burned in my mind. That scenery. Although I love Anak with all of my heart, and I actually like her more than Yui overall, this is only about this year and this season, which belong to Yui. So, Yui advances to the second round. Edgy Dona hit the streets like dope in the 80s. As soon as I seen her design, I knew immediately she was going to be a character I fuck with and I was proven right. Edgy Dona is a chameleon in this way. She could be the spiteful villain like her witch title implies. She could be the helpful friend. She could be the mischievous maiden. There are a lot of faces of Edgy Dona and she wears them well. Arte is a character I started to like more and more over time. She doesn't fit the archetype of characters I usually like, but that makes her place on here even more impressive. I think her character is all about overcoming, just as she had to do being a female artist in the patriarchal era. This one may make you pick up your jaw, but Arte is pulling out a major upset here. This surprised even me, but when I think about Arte versus Echidona, Arte has something special that makes me want to choose her, so that's how it's going to be. I am sorry, Echidona fans. Eh, I'm not really sorry. Fuck y'all niggas. Even though I'm one of them. Special contestant Tatsumaki has been creating waves this year, putting all legal lollies on the map. Before this year, Tatsumaki wasn't as well liked in the One Punch Man fandom, but after seeing her overwhelming strength, battle toughness, and ultra confident demeanor, people started to change their mind on her. Noi from what I saw was immediately a fan favorite. She is just built literally different. There's no way that you're going to have a character that tall and big and not get a reaction from the community unless you're a One Piece fan who, you know, they do that on the regular. Besides her size, Noi is hilarious. Twice she fought someone and because they impressed her, she halted the fight to tell them that she wanted to be friends with him and also announced that she still has to kill him. And when Noi is with Sheen, it's like Kobe and Shaq on the court. This is tough for me. Lolly versus Big Chick. Hmm. Well, I'm already in prison, so I have no issue saying this, but I choose the Lolly Tatsumaki. No matter who you are, you can't deny the work she has put in. Round two. Kaguya more than the surface level qualities was still hitting for me. We recognize Kaguya as a Tsunade, but it's not just a tag slap with her. There is depth to why Kaguya acts the way she does, and a court scene goes into that. It's interesting to see the internal struggle Kaguya goes through. She has her pride that makes her not want to confess to Shirogane, her family ties make it difficult for them to be together anyways, but of course, she loves him, so she still wants to do it. Kaguya has layers to her character that I appreciate, she's extremely fleshed out. Tatsumaki appeals to the meathead in all of us, she talks her shit, and while people may dislike her for that, she also backs up everything she says. And then too, as much as people make her out to be selfish, she still makes hero work a priority as she didn't decide to go all out until everyone was out of the monster association base. 
She may be an asshole at times, but she's a considerate asshole. This time though, love prevails as Kaguya is going to be the one to make it to the finals for a second time in a row. Tatsumaki was a worthy opponent, but my love for Kaguya is too great. Yui is more than a character we can just sympathize with. We can also empathize with her in her quote greedy unquote nature. Yui's wish to win over Hachiman but still wanting to maintain her friendship with Yukino is something I think people can relate to in the sentiment. Ideally, we want things to work out in our favor even if it's unrealistic. And you really have to appreciate how self-aware Yui is of her own nature. Not only that, but Yui's growth is something that is undervalued, I feel. She went from one of the popular girls trying to fit in in season 1 to a dedicated member of the volunteer club that developed a mind of her own. It's weird, but Yui's cooking skills are a good measurement of her progression. Arte is a good example of a strong female character that didn't need to be a fighter to be viewed as such. She is powerful in her will and stubbornness. She sets her mind on something and exhausts herself until that goal is complete. I think in the first episode of Arte, Arte was willing to cut off her own breast just to become an apprentice, showing guts most dudes don't have. Whether you're happy, sad, confused, Arte has pulled out the upset and has advanced to the finals. My heart goes out to Yui, but Arte is my GOAT. Final round. Arte has fought an uphill battle since the very beginning, being an underdog in every single matchup. Can she do it one more time? Kaguya has been to this place last year, but was beaten by that Vixen Toru. Can she avenge that loss this time around? Kaguya has this perfect balance as a character with great writing behind her and being a fun character. For example, I think the story Shirogane told of Princess Kaguya who came from the moon and experienced forbidden love and how that parallels to the Kaguya we know was brilliant. And then also with Kaguya, you'll have moments of her going to the hospital because she's lovesick. Kaguya is wildly entertaining and checks all of the boxes I want out of a character. Arte is a ball of happiness. She illuminates any room she steps in and has a magnetic personality almost akin to Toru Honda. One moment that illustrates this is her relationship with Katarina. Arte was tasked with tutoring a kid who was ill-mannered and rebellious and was able to not only get Katarina to warm up to her, but treat her like a bit sister in a matter of months. In the same way for me, I see Arte as nothing but lovable. Damn, man. I said Arte was Toru light, but she's not quite there as this year's winner of the Satsuki Kiriyuin Award is none other than Kaguya Shinomiya! <laughs> Kaguya had to win one of these eventually and 2020 was her year. Much respect to Arte and the rest of the girls as I think everyone had a good shot to win and even if they aren't the best girl of 2020 in my eyes, they are to someone. I appreciate everyone for coming through for the second edition of Best Girl Wars. I hope you'll join me next year if I'm free by then. But yeah man, that's all I had to say. Sasuke the Savage, I'm out. Fuck this. Well, I, I guess that's it for our friend Sasuke the Savage. If you want to pay his bail, check the description for more information. And, uh, yeah. Bye, I guess. Tasting your soul, you're not in control, just giving you goals. Scared of your past, the future is closed. The start is the end, the end is a start. They both are the same, can't tell them apart. Nigga, that's cuz. The intro is the outro.